with a lot of my favorite tackle out of stock because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I've been trying out some new lures to fill in their place, one of which is the Mirror Lure Marshmallow. And I had not used this before the pandemic, but since I've been testing it out, it has been staying in my tackle bag and I've had a lot of really good success with it. There's a lot of pros to this lure. I'm also gonna share a couple cons with you guys, and I'm even gonna back it all up with some on the water footage of it in action. So let's go ahead and dive in. To give you guys a quick overview on these marshmallows, they're obviously made by Mirror Lure, which traditionally has been a really great hard bait company, but they've started to move into soft plastics the past couple of years. Now, really when we see tackle companies move from one thing they're really good at to something else, it's usually kind of subpar and it doesn't perform that well versus other leading competitors in the market. But because I've been looking for alternatives, I was willing to give them a shot. Again, I was kind of skeptical of it, so I picked some up. And, and really the first thing I found that was really great about these lures, and I'm gonna list as pro number one, was that they come pre-scented with some pretty powerful scent. And I know that the scent is powerful because I found myself in a situation where I was almost dead sticking in front of a redfish, just a couple twitches here and there, and that redfish actually picked it up when the lure wasn't moving at all. So I know it was smelling that scent, and the scent was enough to get that strike. So pro number one, it's got some great scent to it. Now, pro number two that I found after really playing around with this lure, watching it underwater, uh, is just the design of it is just fantastic. There's a lot about this lure that I really like, uh, just with the movement, the actual realism of the design, and some extra little features I'll touch on here in a moment. Now, the first thing I wanna say with the realism, just the design of the lure looks a lot more like a bull minnow or a mud minnow uh, as people like to call them uh, just because of the proportions as you guys can see with most average plastic paddle tails. You just have kind of a straight set design as you guys can see here. What they did with the marshmallow, instead they almost gave it kind of a belly as you guys can see. It really tapers down into that tail. So it's a really nice realistic profile that because of the extra weight and the extra dimension on the side of the lure ends up swinging really well. And that's another part of the design that I really like. That paddle tail really kicks in the water. In fact, that really heavy body wobbles as well. So it's got some really great action to it, even against some of the leading competitors in the market that I've seen. I would put it up with the likes of some of the Z-Man lures, which traditionally are really my favorite paddle tail out there. I'm not saying this is the best paddle tail in terms of action, but it definitely brings something unique to the table. Now, something you also don't see in a lot of you know average pa plastic paddle tails you can see there's no slot on the top of this if you wanted to use a weedless hook the marshmallow actually does have that you can see there's a slot here if you wanted to use a texas eye jig head or one of the owner twist locks there is the opportunity to do that as well so just a great design i could have featured each of these as a pro uh, in of themselves but i would say that just great design overall with the realism of the body the great kick of the tail just uh, the open slot on top for the weedless hook it, they just did a great job designing this lure so one last thing I'd like to add to the pros list of this lure is the strength of the material that it is made out of. It is not Z-Man 10X Elastec tough. It's a lot tougher than the Gulp a little bit tougher than that DOA material. It's one of the more tough plastics I've seen out there. I'm not exactly sure what plastic it is. I've never really seen another soft plastic that's got this kind of toughness to it, but I have been surprisingly impressed with it. Uh, it's really resilient to trash fish strikes, I would have to say. Uh, in terms of pinfish, puffer fish, lizard fish, which are really rampant here in North Carolina, I've had a lot of fish come up and hit this thing, and it has withstood a lot of strikes. Even some of the game fish that I've caught, I've used it you know in a single day caught redfish trout and flounder on a single paddle tail as you guys had seen a little bit earlier on in the footage uh, even the really toothy critters like flounder really don't tear great holes in this thing just because of that durable material so i would like to add that it is very very tough it's not the toughest lure on the market out there but it's definitely worth mentioning on the pros list that this is a very durable lure and you're going to be able to use each of these lures in this pack a little bit longer than you would your average soft plastic so to talk a little bit about the cons of this lure as well, again, it's not the best paddle tail out there and there are definitely some flaws with it. One of the things that was really difficult for me was this lure's buoyancy issues. And again, if you look at some other lures that have a little bit more buoyant material that they're made out of, when you stop working that lure and it settles down to the bottom, especially when you have a jig head and it goes straight down on its head, it will actually sit there sometimes indefinitely. If you've got, you know, Z-Man Elastec that is naturally buoyant, it'll sit there and it'll be on its head, it'll have a little bit of action to 
into it. This material, again, it's very tough, very dense, so it's gonna fall over pretty much immediately. That was what I noticed when I was watching the underwater footage, that it didn't do a great job sitting on its head, and I am looking for that because I do fish with those Twitch Twitch Paws retrieves where my lure is gonna spend you know, an extra second or two on the bottom, and if it falls over immediately, it just does not look natural. I do have some soft plastics that aren't that Elastec material that while they won't stay up indefinitely, they'll sit there for at least a second or two before they fall over. So that to me was definitely a con of this lure. And I found myself in situations where I wanted to use Twitch Twitch pauses, having to fish a little bit faster because I wanted to keep the natural presentation of this lure up. Now that's not to say fish won't hit it when it's laying on its side, as you guys saw with the redfish earlier. It hit when it was paused and I know that lure was laying on its side. So the scent does help a little bit there. But if there's fish that aren't keyed in on scent, you know, this might not be the lure for that scenario. So definitely something I wanted to touch on there. The second thing was the difficulty of rigging. Again, as you guys can see, it's got a very realistic head uh, that actually almost has some little gill plates there, but that made it difficult for me to figure out where I needed to put my jig head. Sometimes I would even center it on the face, uh, right on the nose, and I would rig it through, and it just would not look natural. The bait would be punched a little bit too hard through. So it made it kind of tough for me to figure out where I needed to situate that jig head, and it took a lot of playing around and figuring out, but eventually I did figure out exactly where I needed to put that jig head and I started being able to make it look a little bit more natural, but it did take a little bit of a learning curve. And if you take a look at some other soft plastic paddle tails that are out there, a lot of them have this blunt face, which makes it very easy to know how you need to put that jig head in and where exactly you need to place it. So for me, that was a con, that it was not exactly simple to rig up, uh, but those were really the two biggest things that frustrated me about this marsh minnow. So even though I got these marshmallows as an alternative to some lures that were out of stock at the time, I think I'm just gonna continue using them because they work so well. They've got a really great scent to them. They look and move really well in the water and they're really durable. In fact, this is the second pack that I bought just for this video because I had torn the first one open. I still have three or four of those first lures from that first pack and I've been using them for three weeks. There were days where I'd use one lure all day and it wouldn't get torn up and I could catch multiple fish with it. So you're getting a lot of value out of a pack that's $4.50. So highly recommend you guys pick these up. You can catch redfish, trout, flounder. I know Waiter Dave catches a ton of snook on them. And in fact, when I was filming the underwater footage for this video, I managed to catch a bass as well. So they work in a wide variety of scenarios. And in fact, you can get them for 20% off at the Salt Strong shop where we do have awesome discounts for Salt Strong insiders. So I highly recommend you guys check them out there. And if you have not joined the Salt Strong Insider Club, I highly recommend you do so because lures are only a small part of your fishing game. If you don't know where to look for the fish or the right tactics to use once you've found them, your lures aren't gonna make any difference. So I recommend joining us in the Insider Club where you're gonna have access to thousands of on the water reports as well as courses and other helpful information that we guarantee is gonna help you become a better angler. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If there's any other lures you'd like us to review, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next video.